my WinRAR demo has expired, so I know I've been using Windows 11 for at least 40 days now. How has it been? To put it simply, I get by. I can use Windows 11 to do stuff, I can run my games and applications, but many actions I took for granted in Windows 10 now take a few clicks for them longer, or are hampered by stupid bugs of some sort. For instance, I already typed up a script for this video, but I couldn't search for it because the search bar randomly stopped working and played one of those new error sounds every time I tried. That's probably been the biggest problem I've encountered with Windows 11 so far, but it's really annoying. Believe me, you take this search bar for granted until it's gone. I never knew how frequently I was renaming files until Windows 11 either. The feature is currently hidden away behind an extra click. So right now you click on something, go down to show more options, then down again to rename. This is horrible. Sure, it might only be an extra click and mouse movement every time, but this quickly adds up when you're renaming multiple files, like the latest series of Rick and Morty episodes or whatever. I don't want this, Windows 11. Stop trying to minimalise, especially at the expense of functionality. Anybody who actually uses this operating system will quickly grow to hate this feature, and icons in the taskbar are grouped by default, much like they were with Windows 10. However, there is no longer the option to separate them all again which has been hell. I have never been able to familiarise myself with this. If I have two or three of the same application open, which I often do for video editing, then I like to see a bar for each at the bottom of the screen so that I can tell how each render is progressing. When Windows 11 combines all this into one and then condenses that down into a single square icon, I can't see how the renders are progressing anymore. I can't even see how many copies of Vegas I have open until I hover my mouse over this icon for a few seconds. There is no benefit to this. Let me have my separate visible tabs back, please. Again, this seems like minimalism for no reason other than to hide everything for the sake of it. I have a 4K screen. I have a taskbar that stretches across the whole screen. Let me use it for crying out loud. Much like the renaming of files, I never knew how reliant I was on separate progress bars in the taskbar until it was taken away from me. And lastly, and possibly the biggest, most annoying thing about Windows 11, is that everything takes time. Click on a folder, double click on an icon, click the rename button. Everything comes with a half second delay before it reacts. This was a killer when I first tried Windows 11, but unlike the other things I've mentioned, I have managed to acclimatise myself to it, to the point where I wonder if Windows 10 was just as bad. But no, it wasn't. This delay is new to Windows 11. It isn't to do with hard drive spin-up times, it isn't to do with having a slow processor, it's just built-in delay. Half a second of it, for everything you do. But much like gaming on a low frame rate or using an unresponsive touchscreen, your brain does eventually iron this lag out. It just does this by making my actions more sluggish. Again, negatively impacting my productivity. Windows 11, a bit like using an unresponsive touchscreen. Doesn't sound great, does it? I will stress that this is a Windows 11 beta. I have been using it since an alpha version and have seen many improvements in that time. Previously untextured applications in Windows now look prettier than they did. At one point, the background of the start menu would randomly go invisible, and all the options on the screen would disappear if I enabled HDR for some reason. But this seems to be fixed now. I would not recommend you upgrade to Windows 11 if you use Windows for your work. It hasn't stopped me, but it's less easy and it's slower to use, even accounting for the muscle memory I've acquired in my years using Windows 10. I acknowledge that this is still a beta, I don't expect it to be perfect, but right now I am struggling to find anything about 11 that I prefer to 10. It makes me wonder why they bothered. You'd think, after Microsoft promised that Windows 10 would be the final version, that if they were to make a sequel to it, then there would have been a good reason to doing so, other than just to benefit Microsoft's profit margins. But no, I can't see a reason other than that just yet. Fortunately, I eventually found the older Windows 11 video that I made, so coming up right now are a series of benchmarks and first impressions, many of which I have long since forgotten. Enjoy! For me, my PC didn't meet the requirements. I was lacking TPM 2.0, but I found an option to enable it in the security section of my BIOS here like so. But this footage that I was able to capture thanks to my £350 capture card that I bought and now I'm desperate to try and get my money's worth out of. I ran a series of benchmarks on Windows 10, then immediately upgraded to 11 and ran them again, and the results were reassuringly boring, with there only being a 1-2% to performance drop on average. And this drop was quite consistent in every test carried out, so although my testing wasn't rigorous enough to say for sure, I feel like Windows 11 is just that little bit heavier to run than Windows 10 at the moment. The only test where I saw improvements was in use of benchmark, which I included as a kind of meme, but I'm pleased I did now because the findings were the most interesting of the lot. 
The improvements from Windows 11 that I saw from this benchmark were only in the range of like 1-2% for my GPU and RAM, so well within the margin of error. But one place where I saw a substantial difference was with my SSD, where it scored 13% higher than on Windows 10. So in short, Windows 11 was 1-2% slower on average, but the one SSD test I did was significantly faster. With all that done, I shut my PC down for the night and spent all night thinking about it. Curious to see if this was anomalous, I ran the entire test bench again the following morning, and then a third time after a system restart, just to make sure. These early morning tests showed crippled CPU performance in Cinebench, for reasons I cannot explain, but which have ruined any confidence I have in my testing methods. But aside from that, the other tests were all similar to how they were before, apart from for my SSD speed and user benchmark, which it thought was even faster now, having climbed to 128% the speed that it was on Windows 10. Hmm. With hindsight, I hate benchmarks and I don't know what's going on with them, and I wish I had run the tests on Windows 10 multiple times before upgrading to 11, because it's not like I can now easily return to Windows 10 again to retest it fairly. But then, this testing was only ever intended to be a quick probe to see what might make for a more rigorous follow-up test. And with that in mind, if anybody would like to test their SSD performance before and after moving to Windows 11, then it could be interesting. But probably won't be. Just out of curiosity, I ran the Cinebench test again about 24 hours later, and the results seem to have returned to normal. In fact, better than normal, beating the Windows 10 performance by about 1%. So still within the margin of error, but this time the right way. And you won't believe this, but I reran the user benchmark test as well, and my SSD appears to have got even faster again. So aside from my SSD result, which was absolutely bonkers, I'm happy to conclude that my humble little testing method yielded no particularly interesting results, aside from a couple of questionable variances which would randomly disappear again upon repeated testing. And I'll bear the brunt of the blame for that, and will spare this video a clickbait title about how Windows 11 will transform your gaming experience. Because, let's be honest, nobody's upgrading to Windows 11 for performance. They're doing it because it's new, and because it's got curved edges to stuff. So I'll give you my first thoughts about that. In short, I don't like it. Because everything that stays the same I don't notice, and everything it changes I don't like because it's unfamiliar. It feels like it takes more clicks to get to where I want to go, and menus seem to be hidden within menus, and then they're concealed by an icon for the sake of style over substance. And because the windows now all have curved edges, it makes perfectly cropping stuff down in paint impossible. The taskbar looks similar to how it did before, only everything starts centralised at the bottom of the screen. But it's easy enough to return the start button to the left again but I don't like these small icons. But I've already ranted about this, so let's skip on to my next first impression instead. And I guess everything being in Windows now makes sense, this being Windows, but I don't like that either, because it makes everything feel too floaty and disconnected. For instance, the start menu is now separate from the bar along the bottom, and that just feels wrong. It's like it's going to wander off any second, or that my cursor could slip down the crack. The notifications panel on the right-hand side of the screen has been swapped out for, you guessed it, another window. And to shut down now, after clicking the start button, I have to reach over to this right-hand corner, instead of it being located right above the start button where it was before, which is a final F you before going to bed at night. Jokes aside, I don't care too much about this stuff. It's superficial, isn't it? But what I do hate is the start menu's reduced flexibility and functionality. I loved Windows 10 for this. You could pin the programs you wanted to use to the start menu, customising their order and position and everything. It was like a mini desktop that wasn't hidden behind everything you had open at the time. I couldn't live without it. So Windows 11 does away with that, replacing it with dozens of things that it has chosen to pin for you. But some of these things aren't even installed. Something I learned the hard way when I clicked on Photoshop and it commenced a huge download that ended with it telling me to buy it. No thanks. So of course, the first thing I'll do after reformatting to Windows 11 will be to remove everything from this pinned menu, which is made more difficult because it randomly swaps the order of things in the drop-down menu for it while you're trying to unpin them. I kid you not. Of course, I immediately wanted to uninstall some of the pre-featured stuff that I didn't ever want there in the first place, and I immediately ran into a problem. There wasn't an add or remove program screen anymore. Or at least, it wasn't in the My Computer bit of Windows anymore, which is where I've traditionally headed if I've wanted to uninstall stuff. Instead, I had to click the Start button, type the name of the program, and the Uninstall buttons there instead. It seems like Windows is moving away from icons on the desktop and towards a centralised Start menu where you can access everything from, and I think that's an improvement. I will say now, there is still the old Add and Remove program screen. A month ago, it was hidden deep inside the settings somewhere, but it does now seem to show up when you search for Add in the Start menu. Honestly, trying to remove programs and games has got more fragmented in recent years now that so many things are downloaded through third-party services like Steam and Epic. 
so the importance of the Add and Remove program screen has diminished somewhat. So to hide it more in the background somewhere is one aspect of Windows 11 that I think brings it more in line with modern day requirements. Because these days, I don't often frequent the uninstall list anymore, and by the time my PC gets full enough to worry about such things, it's straight to the reformat for me. Microsoft's Films and TV app has always been a load of rubbish that can't even run half the file types that I watch, but that doesn't stop it from automatically loading up every time and requesting that I pay for permission to use certain file types. No thanks, I'd rather use Media Player Classic, which is free and better. Previously I could change my default video player and it would automatically update it for every video type, but I can't seem to find that screen anymore. I could only find that horrible screen that lets me manually change it for literally every file type that I try to load. And even then, after I've done all that and set all my videos to Media Player Classic, if I click on a video that's in the start menu, it'll still use films and TV to try and load it. Horrible. As usual, Microsoft has employed fresh new tactics to force you into using Microsoft Edge as much as possible. I have battled against this for years, but they integrate it so closely and with so many file types and shortcuts and features of Windows 11 that half the time, even when I'm trying not to use it, I still end up staring at Microsoft Edge's Bing search screen and it's all right, I'll fuck off. It is exhausting to battle against Microsoft's perpetual insistence that we use Edge, and if we refuse, then are we sure? Yeah, but are we really sure? And are we really not quite very sure that we don't not want to not use it? And so on. Be warned. Oh, and it pushed Teams rather hard into my face too. I clicked decline, ignore and all that. Thought I got rid of it, only to later receive an email from Microsoft thanking me for signing up to Teams. What the hell, Microsoft? It's now easier to change your resolution, background images and stuff like that now. You know how display settings and personalise used to be two separate things, and the option to customise your desktop icons was always hidden in one of those being the last place you ever thought of looking? Well this is all condensed down to one big functional settings page now for everything. There are still two separate buttons to get to here, but they lead to roughly the same place now. This settings menu in particular can feel quite unresponsive, it's normal for there to be a half second delay between clicking on something and it responding to that click. We shouldn't have to be dealing with stuff like this on an SSD. And after all this, the desktop icon settings was still in the last place I thought of looking. And the desktop icons now intimidate me, it's as though they're staring straight into my soul. The isometric perspective has always looked more appealing to me. I like the new desktop backgrounds. I don't know what most of them are meant to be, some of them look like a developer got a little over enthusiastic with a Pringles can. But I like this snowy image because it's bright and clean and pretty, and it reminds me of my favourite images from older versions of Windows before they got all abstract. And it's just as well I like this one so much because when I browsed for the others, nothing showed up. Microsoft, please fix. I eventually navigated to this folder and found all four desktop images that Windows 11 ships with, and I immediately had to ask. Why is there a photoshopped sun in all of them? Why does it not match the lighting in the rest of the image? Why has this iceberg disappeared? Microsoft, what are you doing? I know I've been moaning a lot about some non-issues, but I also have some good news. I noticed a change to Notepad. Loading any text file more than a few hundred kilobytes in size would previously grind it all to a halt, but it seems like in Windows 11 it can easily load multi-megabyte text files with ease. Now I love Notepad++, but it's no longer necessary to address this particular shortcoming with Notepad's functionality. And hey, get this, my desktop PC now has a flight mode. Also, what's with this? My internet connection and my sound icon are grouped. But that's a lie because which control panel it loads depends on which side of it I click. And I instinctively left click on it when I want to change my sound properties, but the menu that pops up is the wrong one and then that menu blocks me from being able to see the new one until I've clicked off the whole thing first. It sounds like a small annoyance, but I was there trying to configure a second video stream, and in the space of about half an hour, this issue had developed from being a small annoyance to being annoying enough that I literally rage quit and went on a walk. And at one point, right clicking on the desktop randomly stopped working until I reset. How does that sort of stuff even happen? Many of you may not remember a time before Windows 10, but there was a time when a system crash would render Control Alt Delete pointless. It still happens in 10 from time to time, but not that often. You can normally get to the task manager even when all else is burning down around you. But since upgrading to Windows 11, a program did freeze on me, and I was unable to get my cursor to show over the task manager, meaning that I had to hard restart my PC, which is something I haven't had to do in a while. In conclusion, I've tried Windows 11. I will be returning to Windows 10 again soon because I'm not excited enough about Windows 11 to be their guinea pig until it's ready for launch. There was a time when I would have been excited to have been on the cutting edge. But these days, Windows 10 does what I need it to and with minimal hassle, and I value those qualities highly. 
I know that, in a year's time or whatever, there will have been many changes to Windows 11, a lot more polish and probably a few new features that will actually make it better than Windows 10, but until then, I'm out. I don't see why any of this needed a new version of Windows. Many of the changes seem like change, for the sake of change. So yeah, I'm not exactly the most positive about Windows 11. It's been interesting to use it though. I remember using Vista early on, and other than it feeling slower and less compatible, I didn't have much else to say about it. So my knowledge of Windows has certainly improved since then, and in comparison to Vista, my grievances with 11 are minor. But then I am comparing it to Vista, so it's not a high bar to beat. Looking online, promised improvements include official integration of Android apps. I'll confess, that is big news indeed. I am horrified by how neglected Windows programs are in comparison to their Android counterparts these days, and when my mum messages me on WhatsApp I can't wait for the day that I can finally respond using my keyboard instead of fumbling about with my phone screen and its inferior words per minute capacity. And before you proudly submit that comment you've typed stating that I should just use an emulator, like that's an acceptable solution, I'll say, no, that is not an acceptable solution. It is ridiculous that we don't have native support for stuff like this. It staggers me that my phone is so much more functional for so many things than my PC is in 2021. So I will proudly state that official integration into the operating system will be a big improvement. Oh, and they promise better virtual desktop support as well, which is good because on Windows 10 it's just a feature I accidentally enable from time to time and there doesn't seem to be any point in it whatsoever. It's one of those things that I want to like the idea of, but the downsides massively outweigh any possible benefits to it. And the other improvements just seem to hint that Microsoft is gearing to launch this as their next mobile operating system. At least this time it seems like they're prioritising desktop users, instead of forcing us all to use Windows 8 and its mobile phone optimised layout. And HDR support in Windows 11 should be better as well. I might be appreciating this already, but since I only got an HDR capable monitor after I switched to Windows 11, I can't say how it compares with Windows 10 right now. Though sometimes after going full screen in an application, my desktop goes super dark until I disable HDR again, so I wouldn't say it's flawless in Windows 11 just yet. Operating systems are strange things, and talking about my experiences with them seems surprisingly personal, intimate, and leaves me feeling exposed and vulnerable. In my lifetime I have clocked up tens of thousands of hours on Windows operating systems. Compared with everybody else I know, I am an expert at Windows. I can fix problems that other people have with it, no problem. And when I have a problem I instinctively understand option screens and features that I may never have seen before in my life. I have no problem using Windows for what I need it for. But on the other hand, in some ways I feel I have barely scratched the surface of what an operating system is. After all, I have only ever used it as a tool to further my own interests and writing this video has forced me to question my knowledge of Windows. It could very well be that you will reach an entirely different conclusion about Windows 11 just because you happen to use its features in a different way, or use a different combination of programs and shortcuts. If nothing else, experiencing an early and buggy version of Windows makes me appreciate just how solid and reliable Windows 10 is, and all of the millions of man hours that must have gone into making it as polished as it is right now. We take that stuff for granted.